Hi, everyone. Uh, for those of you who know me, my name is not Zinath. Uh, Adam Sobel, also working with Zinath on Gavi's vaccine implementation team. I'm the program manager for our cholera and typhoid vaccine programs, and I'll provide you with a brief update on our support today. Um, so quickly, in the interest of time, I'll just get right to it. Um, to start with, a, a, a quick overview of Gavi's support for the global cholera stockpile, both Gavi supported and non-Gavi countries can access the stockpile to use OCV in emergency and non-emergency settings. The stockpile is intended to have 3 million doses available at all times, particularly for emergency response in humanitarian crises. And countries who have determined that they need OCV to respond to, to either of those can apply directly to the ICG to review and respond to, to those needs. And for non-emergency OCV use, so planned campaigns and hotspots, requests are submitted as part of a broader cholera control plan and situational analysis that's reviewed by the GTFCC's OCV working group. Countries that are supported by Gavi can receive both support for OCV costs and freight and delivery, as well as the operational costs uh, that are needed to actually conduct and implement the campaigns. It's just important to note that um, while non-Gavi supported countries can access the cholera stockpile, they must reimburse the cost for the vaccine and the freight and the delivery, and they're not eligible to receive Gavi funding for the operational costs. So just wanted to put that out there. Um, in terms of uh, our historical support, so our investment decision to support OCV in 2013 has been a key catalyst in, in spurring both supply and demand in the market. You can see the rapid uh, uptake of vaccine use, and since 2014, uh, Gavi's support has resulted in the shipment of over 45 million doses of vaccine. And since our investment decision, a new pre-qualified ma manufacturers enter the market. Important product innovations have been developed or in, the, or in the process of being developed. And most importantly, countries are using the vaccine with increased frequency and scale to control and prevent cholera outbreaks. This slide highlights the strategic demands scenarios that, that Gavi's developed for OCP, OCV with the support of many of the partners in the room. Given the time constraints, I won't dive into the details of the forecast, but I have provided a link in the slide so that everyone can access it directly in case it's of interest. And should you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me or our colleagues on Gavi's market shaping team to discuss it a little bit further. Um, as, as many of you know, every five years, Gavi conducts a vaccine investment strategy, um, which serves to identify the priority vaccines that address the most critical needs for countries based on impact, value for money, and contributions to Gavi's core mandate. And as in the previous two cycles of the VAS, it's taking place before Gavi's replenishment. So having a view to the vaccine priorities in the next period through the VAS allows us to develop our strategy in a thoughtful way. And the VAS in 2018 was conducted in several phases whereby candidates were identified, an evaluation framework was developed and subsequently used to assess and shortlist vaccine candidates. And subsequently, we developed investment cases which were presented to the board at the end of last year. All of this was done in close consulta consultation with many of the stakeholders in this room. But there was a particular emphasis placed on direct engagement with in-country stakeholders. This slide highlights uh, some of the key outputs and findings from the VIS assessment for an expanded cholera program. So we specifically looked at an increased Gavi investment in the preventive use of OCV in hotspots beyond our current support for the stockpile. We found that there's an opportunity to optimize Gavi's current program by adding a more systematic vaccination program for planned OCV use in addition to the, to the stockpile support. A Gavi learning agenda that was conducted from 2013 found that uh, uh, plan immunization with OCV was feasible and high coverage could be achieved, and that has helped increase country awareness and appetite for OCV use. Long-term investment in planned OCV use would also bring increased predictability uh, for demand for manufacturers and help shape the market towards improved and increased supply. And the analysis noted that Gavi's investment in OCV is not going to be sufficient to comprehensively control cholera. And so um, we recognize that uh, our investment is just one component of a multi-sectoral strategy that countries need to have in place to, 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 fully, to fully reduce transmission. So with that in hand, the investment that was recommended to Gavi's board 
was for Gavi to support the transition of a cholera program to include planned immunization in hotspots in addition to our stockpile support. For planned immunization, country financing would be necessary to demonstrate country ownership and countries would need to demonstrate their commitment to a comprehensive cholera control plan to maximize the impact of uh, combined interventions. And it's important to note that the nature of country financing is currently under review at Gavi. As we review our broader financing policies in the coming year, it's just important to remember that OCV is one of 18 antigens that we support, and our policy needs to adequately address all of them. All of the VIS investment recommendations were in principle intended to start in 2021 at the beginning of Gavi's next strategy, once funding is secured uh, through our replenishment. However, as Gavi's support for OCV uh, was slated to end in 2019, we also recommended bridge funding for 2020 to extend Gavi's support through the stockpile until the next strategy and replenishments in place. So in terms of the board's decisions, in November 2018, they met to review uh, both the VIS and a number of other specific Gavi issues. During the meeting, the board approved a transition from Gavi's existing stockpile support to include additional expanded support for planned preventive immunization in hotspots. This decision was subject to two conditions. One, of course, being the availability of funding following Gavi's replenishment. And two, further alignment with the VIS and the vaccines within that portfolio uh, to Gavi's next strategy, which is currently under development. So therefore, a final decision on Gavi's support for the VIS vaccines will be taken later this month uh, at the board's meeting in, in, in late June. Effective immediately last November, the board did approve an extension of financial support through 2020 to cover the gap that, that we had identified for the global stockpile to continue supporting OCV use uh, in planned uh, campaigns in, in hotspots. And finally, the Gavi board at the time approved a small envelope of funding, funding for 2019-2020 uh, for a cholera-specific learning agenda to help address specific gaps in our knowledge base to help optimize Gavi's investment in OCV. So I think the key messages here are, are that these decisions indicate that Gavi fully intends to continue its support in OCV, to expand its support in OCV. Um, and while our current funding only runs through 2020, we're very much planning that as of 2021, our, export, our, our support expands and countries will be able to access additional support for, for planned preventive campaigns. In light of the pending decision, starting in 2021, Gavi's support for OCV will include the stockpile for emergency response and, and humanitarian crises, but also this expanded use in, in hotspots. Um, our support will need to shift from being accessed, uh, currently preventive requests go through the stockpile. It needs to shift um, at some point to follow a more similar process to other applications that countries submit to access Gavi support for other vaccine programs. And so this will result in a transition from the current model of OCV access. And so we're closely engaged with the GTFCC OCV working group to determine the requirements necessary for countries to fulfill, to access Gavi support for planned OCV use and manage this transition in a thoughtful way. Uh, and just finally, thank you. Um, as we collectively engage to design Gavi's expanded support for OCV, there's three key principles that Gavi views as fundamental to the development of the program. The first is that prior to uh, Gavi support, countries need to develop comprehensive cholera control plans that have been reviewed and validated by the GTFCC. The second principle is that applications for Gavi support for planned OCV use are reviewed by an independent Gavi review body, similar to other vaccine programs. And the final principle is that a measure of country financing will be required to access Gavi support for planned OCV use. As I mentioned, Gavi is currently in the process of reviewing its, its funding support policies, which will inform the financing requirements from countries in the new program starting in 2021. So these are kind of the key principles that we're operating with as we start the program design process. I'll stop there in the interest of time and just say that um, Gavi is very pleased and views its investment in OCV as, as a smashing success given the uptake and the interest that countries have. And we remain supportive of the GTFCC's effort to work with countries and, and support the global roadmap.